Good evening and welcome along to our gospel service here at Money Slain Free Presbyterian Church. If you have a copy of God's Word, I would encourage you to turn with me, please, to the Psalm 34. The Psalm 34, it's a psalm we've been in before at our prayer meetings and we were in it uh, last Friday evening at our youth fellowship. But the Psalm 34 is a wonderful psalm. We're going to read all 22 verses. Then we're going to have a short word of prayer and then look at the verse 8. But let's read this psalm together. Psalm 34, the title is the Psalm of David when he changed his behaviour before Abimelech who drove him away and he departed. Verse 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him, and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him, and delivereth them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days, that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil, and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. And the face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. And the Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. We trust the Lord to bless the public reading of his holy and precious word to each of our hearts. Let's bow in a word of prayer together, please. Heavenly Father, we do come before thee at this gospel hour. <coughs> we do pray that thou undertake for our need tonight. Lord, we pray that thou speak very plainly, very clearly through this preacher. We pray that there may be sinners willing to repent and believe the gospel tonight. Lord, we thank thee for who thou art and what thou hast done. We thank thee that the blood was shed. We thank thee that there is a cross to preach. We thank thee there is good news and a gospel to proclaim. And Father, we do ask of thee tonight that some sinner may realise the solemnity and seriousness of their sin and that they would turn to Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. Undertake for the need now. Keep us in safety in future days. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like you to look with me, please, at the Psalm 34 and the verse 8. The Psalm 34 and the verse 8 states, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. I want to entitle the message tonight very simply, Why not taste why not taste now as many of you already know listening to this uh, there are a number sadly of covid cases within the congregation uh, myself being one of them and uh, only the other day we came across uh, one of the symptoms uh, i suppose of covid19 but uh, at the same time it, it turned into quite the humorous uh, event because something was said about uh, the ability to smell or, or to taste. And 
uh, as one of the symptoms are that you, with this virus, lose that ability to smell or uh, to taste your food. Uh, and this realisation suddenly dawned on me uh, on Friday evening sometime. Uh, and we thought it was something quite unique, quite extraordinary. Uh, and we even decided to break out a tin of tuna. Uh, and we got up close and personal sniffing at this tin of tuna and couldn't smell or taste the thing. And thought how peculiar it all was. Uh, and uh, it suddenly brought my thought and my attention to the scriptures and what the scriptures have to say on taste uh, especially. Uh, and look what the Word of God has to say in Psalm 34 and the verse 8. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. And the comment was passed. Well, now that we can't taste or, or smell, now seems to be the time to empty the cupboards and eat and uh, take all of that stuff that we didn't particularly like or want to eat because you wouldn't be able to taste it. But the ability to smell something, and now it has its positives and its negatives, we could say. You could say when the slurry is going out, maybe it's not so much of a positive for those that don't like that smell. Uh, for others, you may uh, smell the roast dinner this afternoon uh, and smell the, the meat and smell the roast potatoes and the gravy and, and all of those wonderful things. And, and you smell it and you take it in and, oh, it smells so good. You have a desire to to eat of it, a desire to take it, a desire to, to feast upon it. Well, then, after the smell, you have the plate sitting in front of you on the dining table, uh, and you get the knife and fork, and you tuck in, uh, and you taste it all. Or you taste how succulent the meat may be, or, or the crispiness of the roast potatoes, and you feel the gravy uh, upon your tongue, and oh, it, it all tastes so wonderful, so good. You see, uh, we have certain desires, desires to smell, desires to taste, desires to, to take that which is good and what we want. Well, David is saying exactly the same thing here. He's saying, taste and see, oh, that the Lord is good. If only you would understand, if only you would understand what the Lord is like. If only you knew what he tasted of, and, and if only you saw his goodness, then you would run to, to feast upon Christ. You would run to, to take him into your arms as your own. You know, in Psalm 34, as we noted on Friday evening, it's a time in David's life that is very difficult. King Saul has been pursuing after David, He's been hunted for his life. He has fled to the territory of the Philistines. He's been effectively arrested, taken to the king of Gath. Uh, you've got to remember that he, not so long before, he killed Goliath of Gath. A very dangerous situation. A very real possibility here of David dying. Of course, David knew he wasn't going to die because he'd been anointed the next king of Israel, and when God has gave a promise, it is impossible for God to lie. But nonetheless, a very, very dangerous situation for David to be in. And we find all of that described in the, uh, in the title of the psalm. It talks about David changing his behaviour. <coughs> he pretended to be a madman, didn't he? Pretended to be crazy, pretended to be what we now call mentally ill. Uh, and the king of Gath said, I, I don't require uh, mad men and David was able to escape the clutches of, of possible death well in all of that you may say well what got him through it all well we find in the verse one as we saw on Friday night I will bless the Lord at all times his praise shall continually be in my mouth you say how peculiar why would the Lord praise uh, or why would David praise the Lord at all times why would he have his praise continually in his mouth? What, what a strange thing. Why would that be the case? Maybe you could understand it if everything was hunky-dory and going well and, uh, and rainbows and sunshine and all the rest of it. You'd say, well, I could understand David praising God then, but, but not now. Not in this time of trial. Not in this dark hour. 
Well, what got him through all of those things? Well, the verse 8 tells us what got him through all those things. And he says it in his time of trial and danger. He says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. What got him through? Christ. What got him through the dark hour? Christ. What got him through when it came to meeting up with the king of Gath? Christ. What got him through when he very really saw his life flash before his eyes? He could have died by the sword of that ruler. Christ got him through. You know, my friend, as the people of God and money slain, you could say at this time we're going through a dark hour. We're going through times that we do not want to experience and we don't want to go through. But who will get us through? Christ. Christ will get us through. The scriptures say, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. The scriptures say, Christ says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Christ will get us through this. We know that. We are the children of God. We are joint heirs with Christ. We come unto the Almighty as saying, Abba, Father. We are children of the Almighty. Christ will get us through. And my friend, if you don't know what I'm talking about because you're not yet saved, then know this. There is no one quite like Jesus Christ. As Song of Solomon chapter 5 and the verse 16 says, Yea, he is altogether lovely. This is my beloved and this is my friend. There is nobody like Christ. And I ask you, sinner friend, why have you not tasted yet? Why have you not tasted of Christ, of his bountiful love, of his Beloved provision toward us. Why have you not come to the cross? Why are you not yet saved? Because Christ very literally stands with arms wide open. And he's longing to save you. He's, he's desiring to come. And change your life. And make you a new creature in Christ. So what are you waiting for? The scriptures say of his love. It says but God uh, commendeth his love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. The scriptures say, uh, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while, it, while he is near. The scriptures say, It is time to seek the Lord. The scriptures say, Prepare to meet thy God. You know, if we were to go through every single gospel verse in the Bible, verses where the Lord demands of you and pleads with you and entreats you to come unto him, you would hardly believe all of the verses the Lord gives asking you to come. And this is one of the greatest. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Why have you not tasted yet? I want you to notice with me firstly the desire to taste. The desire to taste. <coughs> now, as I've already said, if you picture that illustration of, uh, of a beautiful meal, maybe even this afternoon uh, when you had your roast dinner and you think of it, oh, you think of the smell, you, you think of the aroma floating from the oven and from the kitchen, uh, you think of all that, that fills your desires as you long to, to make it to the table and you long to pick up the, the instruments, the knife and fork and dig right into that meal and then as as you put it into your mouth and, and you allow the, the flavours to come into your taste buds and, and you chew and you taste and, uh, and you're satisfied. You know, my friend, there is the desire there. The desire to taste the food. Well, I ask you, do you have a desire to taste and see that the Lord is good? Listen just about the Lord for a moment. The Lord Jesus Christ is God's own son. The Lord Jesus Christ, as God himself, very God of very God, became man of very man. And he came down to this wicked world of ours. And he became the God-man. And the Lord Jesus Christ did something for you and for me. He lived a perfectly righteous and sinless life. 
He did not sin. He could not sin. He was and is and always will be impeccable. And the Lord Jesus Christ, after living that perfectly righteous life on behalf of sinners, he died to pay the punishment for sinners. The Lord Jesus Christ went all the way to the cross. And listen to me as I say this, my friend. Jesus Christ suffered far more than physical agonies. Oh yes, you may, you, you may look at the, the nails to his hands. You may look at, at the scourging upon his brow. Or, or, you, or, or the scourging upon his back. You may look at, at the thorns upon his brow. You may look at all of those physical sufferings he had to endure. But my friend, listen. He suffered something that no other had suffered when being crucified. And he suffered the wrath of God upon his very soul. The cup of God's wrath for all of the sins of all of Christ's people was poured upon our blessed Saviour. And it was so huge and enormous, the weight of that sin, that the Lord cried out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Listen, my friend, this is what Jesus Christ did for sinners this is what Jesus Christ did when it says in the scriptures Christ died for the ungodly. This is what Christ did for you and I. And he lived for us. He died for us. But he rose again for us as well. The third day he left the borrowed tomb. The third day he, he was alive. And then he ascended up into heaven's glory. And today, right now, this evening, he says, I am alive forevermore. And you know what, my friend? He's coming back again. He's coming back to take his people unto himself. And we're going to live and we're going to reign with him. That's what the Bible says. This is the Christ that I present to you tonight. And I say, do you have a desire yet? Do you have a desire to meet with him? Do you have a desire to follow him? Do you have a desire to be his and to cry of Christ that he is mine, mine, mine. I know that he is mine. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. There's no one like Christ. And I ask you, do you have the desire to taste yet? But then secondly, I want you to see the duty to taste. The duty to taste. It's one thing to have a desire. But for some reason, men and women don't desire Christ. You want to know why that is? Because men and women are totally and utterly depraved. The Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible then says, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, and there is none that seeketh after God. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. That's what the Bible says. And that's why we have no desire for Christ. We have no desire to taste. You see, my friend, just hearing about Christ and hearing about who he is and hearing about what he's done and hearing about what he's going to do, that ought to be enough to put a desire within your heart to taste and see that the Lord is good. But you have no desire because you, you love your sin too much. And your sin will condemn you to a lost eternity in hell forevermore if you do not trust Christ. So my friend, I tell you this, you ought not only to have a desire to taste, but you have a duty to taste. Listen, if you want to be saved, if you want to have your sins forgiven, if you want to know that you are saved from hell and on the road to heaven, I'm going to walk through the pearly gates that one day, then you need to fulfill the duty of the sinner and trust Jesus Christ by repenting and believing the gospel. That's what you need to do right now as you're listening to this broadcast online. You need to trust Christ. You need to come to him and you need to ask him to forgive you of your sin. And you need to turn from your sin before it's too late. As I've already quoted, Romans 6 verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, 
bought, bought the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, Christ is the turning point. If you read in Ephesians chapter 2, you'll read at the start of that chapter about all of our condition, about how we are dead in trespasses and in sins, about how we are the children of disobedience. And you'll read about all of these terrible things about our, our depravity and our sin. But then you'll come to the verse, the turning point, and it says, But God, but God who is rich in mercy. Oh, understand this. There is a duty upon you to trust Christ right now. And I ask you, when will you do it? I trust you'll come to him before it's too late. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. But then I want you to note not only the desire to taste, the duty to taste. Thirdly, the delight in tasting. Oh, you see, people have this idea that the Christian life is about rules and regulations and doing this and doing that and you can't do this and you can't do that. You've got to go to church so many times and, and people almost put across as if it's some begrudging thing to be a child of God. What nonsense. Listen, my friend, there is no greater joy. There's no greater happiness than knowing that you're a child of the King. Oh, no greater joy. Of knowing that you're saved, you're going to heaven, your sins are washed away. There is no greater delight than in tasting. I don't know, maybe as a child you had a meal set in front of you. And maybe you didn't want to taste that meal. Maybe you thought, I'm not going to like it. And you didn't even want to try it. And uh, maybe you're a parent that has forced a child to do this as well. Uh, and you put the meal down. And you say, you'll like it. And you say, no, I won't. And you say, we'll try it. And you say, no, I won't. You've got to spoon feed it to them. You know what sometimes happens? They like it. They enjoy it. They ask for more. They ask for seconds. It becomes their favorite meal. You know, my friend, that's what it was like for many of us as Christians. Oh, yes, there was no desire there. We loved our sin. We had a desire after sin. Oh, there's a duty there. We trusted Christ. But for an awful lot of people, it wasn't done with a willing heart. The Lord had to go an awful long way in persuading us to come from our sin and trust him. Well, listen, my friend, you know when you taste, the scriptures say, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. You know when you taste, you'll see it. You'll understand it. You'll delight in it. And you will know for the first time that there now when you're saved, you'll realize that there is nobody like Jesus Christ. You'll say, why, oh why was I such a fool to stay in my sin for so long? Why did I stay in that condition when Christ was waiting for me? When Christ was stood with open arms? When Christ was longing to take me, to save me, to, to lift me from the miry clay. Why was I such a fool to wait so long? I ask you, sin. are you waiting? Are you still in your sin? Are you thinking that you're not too sure on Christ yet? What think ye of Christ? The scriptures say when you taste and when you see, oh, you'll know. David knows in his own heart, and he says, you'll know as well. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. He is good. Oh, there's not a bad taste going to be left in your mouth when it comes to the Lord. Oh, no. The Lord is good. I trust you'll come to him today and you'll realize that before it's too late. Last of all, we've seen the desire to taste, the duty to taste, the delight in tasting. Fourthly, the declaration about those that taste. The declaration about those that taste. Look what it says in the verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. 
Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. You see, there's a blessing for those that come to him. There's a blessing for those that repent and believe. There's a blessing for those that are saved. Oh, my friend, listen to me as I say this. If you don't know Christ yet, then listen, you don't know what you're missing out on. Listen, I'm a Christian, and I am not a Christian because of any good in me. I'm a Christian because Jesus Christ saved me. Jesus Christ opened up my eyes when I was blind. Jesus Christ opened up my heart when I was stubborn and unwilling. I am a Christian because of the mercy of God. Well, listen to me as I say this now. There are blessings in my life which no unconverted sinner will ever have unless they trust Christ. You know, my friend, the day and hour that I was saved, I was put on the road from hell to the road onto heaven. I'm going to heaven. I'm going to glory. You know, I have a pass. I have a passport. I'm going to heaven because I'm a citizen of the kingdom of God. I am a child of God. You know that, my friend? I am not just going to heaven, and I'm not going as a stranger. I'm going as a citizen of heaven, and I'm a citizen of heaven because I'm a child of the king. I'm a child of God. You know that? I'm a child of God. The scriptures say to me, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. You know, because God... God, the Creator, the Almighty, the Sovereign, the King, is my Father. I can pray to Him, I can talk to Him at any time, and He promises He'll talk back, He'll answer. Oh, my friend, do you understand the privileges there are of being a Christian? And the Scriptures say, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. You taste, you will see, you will know He's good, but know this further, that there are blessings for that person the taste. And look at that declaration. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. You will be a blessed individual. What a declaration that is. So I ask you, my friend, and I ask you with all sincerity, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Come to Jesus Christ and dine. Come to him now. Come. Come before it's too late. You know, you may say, well, I've got plenty of time. Well, listen to me. I'm thankful that, yes, even though I have uh, tested positive for COVID-19, I'm very thankful that I can do largely what I need to do and want to do and all of those things, even though there's a weariness in those things. I'm still thankful that I am in the good health that I am in. But listen, my friend, that could not have been so. Might not have been. It wasn't for many, many people. And you know, I'll tell you this. Last Sunday, last Sunday, I made a public announcement twice that there would be services in the building this Sunday. You know that? Because I didn't know what was going to come in seven days' time. Sure, I didn't know what was coming in five minutes' time. And we make these announcements in the will of God that something will happen. Listen, my friend, last Sunday when we all sat together in Money Lane, we didn't have a clue what the week would hold. We didn't know. But the Lord did. That's why I emphasize to you, my sinner friend, that you may feel confident now in and of yourself saying, I've got years to go or I've got plenty of time left. Listen, you don't know if you've got five minutes left. That's why the scriptures say, it is time to seek the Lord. That's why the scriptures say, behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, today is the day of salvation. That's why the scriptures say, uh, prepare to meet thy God. There is an urgency. Do it right now. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And then understand that beautiful declaration. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Oh, my friend, what are you waiting for? Come to Christ. He died for sinful men and women. He died for sinful boys and girls. I trust today you'll realise he died for you, that you come to that place where you can hang on to your sin no longer, that place where you say, I can't keep doing this. I can't keep rebelling against my God. I've got to come to him. I've got to trust him. I've got to be saved. And listen to me as I say this. You don't need me 
to save you or, or say a prayer over you or, or do something for you. I, I can't do anything. I can't save you. I can just present Christ to you. But right where you find yourself, wherever you're listening from, you may be listening in the living room or in the kitchen while you're working. Uh, you may be listening in the bedroom or some other room uh, to be quiet from everybody else. You may be listening in the garden or in the car. You'll be listening from anywhere. Well, listen, my friend, Christ will save you right where you are. Christ will take you. He'll redeem you. And all you've got to do is pray to him. Open up your heart and pray to him and say, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. He'll take you. He'll save you. He'll redeem you. So come today. Why have you not tasted yet? Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we come before thee tonight and we thank thee for thy word. We pray that thou undertake for our need and bless us abundantly. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs>